Welcome to the 2023 DBA Design Effectiveness Awards. Thank you for joining us. We're delighted to bring everyone together to recognize and celebrate the remarkable achievements of the 40 businesses who have created and delivered award-winning outcomes that you'll hear about today. From the redesign of an Icelandic town center to the bold and impactful exhibition design in Cambridge, from brand transformations to helping save lives, the stories behind the winning case studies inspire emotion and admiration for what design in business and society can achieve. If you're joining us here as a winner, you should be incredibly proud. The judging is rigorous and winning shows that your work has gained independent and peer reviewed recognition of its value and impact that you have created opportunities and successes that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So well done to those of you who have won. Your win is testament to the power of design. And if you're joining us here purely for the inspiration and to hear about what makes a DBA Design Effectiveness Award winner, welcome, sit back and enjoy. When the show's over, I heartily encourage you to read the full case studies of the winners that pique your interest. There's so much more to these case studies than we can possibly showcase today. So dig in and be inspired by the full story. The DPA's awards are not like other awards. There really is no barrier to making a case and winning an award, whether you're a small startup or established design team. Whether you're addressing some of the societal challenges our world is facing or stewarding the next stage of growth for business big or small, these awards are for you. It's one of the reasons we have no categories. This is about the unique context your work was happening in and how it delivered results, whatever they were. This isn't about comparing one with another. Entries have been judged entirely on their own merits, not in comparison to others. Design is an increasingly vital area for the economy, society and the planet. It has the capability to be of intrinsic value to the future prosperity of all. It's our job as an industry to prove it. So thank you for providing us with the ammunition to prove this value to business and government and to growing the future influence of design. Because there is a thread that runs through all of the work that you'll see today. And that is the ability of designers to cause behavior change. Sometimes it's about tempting people to buy something they've never bought before. Sometimes it's about furnishing people with something that enables them to make life-saving decisions. Sometimes it's about listening to the concerns of a community and building back a sense of belonging that didn't exist before. Sometimes it's about getting people to donate to good causes. And sometimes it's about making a group of people aware of a great opportunity for them. These are all examples of designers designing something so well that the desired outcome is achieved, and in some cases, far exceeded. So you can understand why I sometimes find myself banging my head on a brick wall when I read articles like this one in the FT yesterday. The UK has lost its global leadership on climate action, according to the government's independent climate advisors, as a lack of ministerial initiative meant the country was making worryingly slow progress on cutting carbon emissions. A bit further into the article, it talked of the government's over-reliance on yet to be scaled up technologies and called for the government to instead look at changing consumer behavior. So Rishi, governments across the world and business, can I please ask you to turn to the superpower you have in design and your own designers in government, whose job it should be to drive behavior change at scale on this issue. I'm about to take you through a set of extraordinary examples that make the case loud and clear for designers to be brought into these conversations now because they know how to get people to do stuff. Design industry, we have a dual responsibility in this. Not only do we need to make our workplaces sustainable and carbon neutral, but we have to understand the impacts of all our projects, measure their impacts, good and bad, 
and help our governments and businesses achieve the urgent changes that are needed. Rishi, I'm back to you. This phenomenal sector is part of the creative industries and the lion's share of our businesses in the creative industries are small. They are the Davids in a world of Goliaths. I need your help to catapult all designers up the learning curve of sustainable practice because they'll have the knowledge to strike at the head and heart of the issue. So let me know when you've got a slot in your diary for that chat. To the design commissioning businesses and charities here today, exercising design to achieve strategic ambitions, well done. Make this a habit and share your worst fears about people, planet and profit with your agencies and in-house designers. The legislation that is likely to come at us in relation to sustainable practice will, I think, be considerable. There's a risk that this will be the only option left to ministers. Don't wait for that to happen. Start now with a conversation with your designers. Last quote from the FT. Apparently, the UK is not alone in failing to make headway. Well, let's stick to our commitments. And just maybe enough designers across enough challenging areas can make the difference and even exceed expectations like they have here today, because it's a habit designers have been fine tuning for years. So this is how we'll be awarding and recognizing our winners today. Bronze awards go to entries that conclusively prove design's contribution to the commercial or societal success of the work and have evidenced strong results. Silver awards are reserved for excellent examples of design effectiveness, which have provided impressive evidence. They prove the work exceeded expectations and led to significant results. Gold awards are for those really outstanding projects that provided unquestionable and considerable evidence of exceptional results, creating powerful business or societal impact far exceeding expectations. Once we've revealed the bronze, silver and gold awards, we'll be announcing the winner of the highly coveted Grand Prix. This special award goes to the entry the judges felt demonstrates the most significant, impressive and impactful evidence of design effectiveness. Before we begin, some notes on stage direction for proceedings. Across the different levels of award from bronze, silver to gold, we'll be inviting some of you to the virtual stage so that you can share more information about your work with the rest of us. And some of your work will also feature in short films. Also during the event today, I'll be taking, talking to some of the winners. We're looking forward to hearing from you all. A few final notes before we begin. If you're finding you can't see speakers on screen, make sure your viewing option is set to side-by-side -side gallery view and that should do the trick. The chat function is open today, so do share your congratulations to others and celebrate together in there. If we come to you live, please hit the mute on your colleagues on whichever channel you're using to celebrate with your team so that it's only you we can hear. And don't forget, please use the hashtags DBA, DEA and effective design as you share news of your wins on social media. Now it's time to present this year's DBA Design Effectiveness Awards. Let's dive in. The immersive design and visitor experience of the Hockney's Eye exhibition powerfully engaged audiences. Donations from the public rose 373%. The Fitzwilliam Museum and Heon Gallery's temporary exhibition was a journey into the artwork and mind of David Hockney. Home Studio's bold design and spatial strategy created a fantastic flow through the exhibition, and 70% of visitors rated the wayfinding good or very good. Bringing to life and connecting the content across all the gallery spaces and touch points, the design helped Hockney's Eye become the Heon Gallery's most successful exhibition ever. It brought in 168% more visitors than previously, and the Fitzwilliam Museum secured almost double the number of memberships it had achieved throughout 2019. Together with Home Studio, they have won a bronze award. Congratulations. 
Let's take a closer look at the experience they created. Fantastic. On to our next winner now. Lou Asui and Sue Morrison deliver inclusive sports coaching, but to enable more children with disabilities to benefit, they needed to engage more schools. Working with The Engine Room, a new name and vibrant identity were created for their business, articulating their offer in an easy to understand and engaging way. The brand design has resonated with schools, sports organizations, and teachers, and it's helped them expand their reach from 20 to 375 schools, making a difference to the lives of more children and young people with disabilities. Over 1,000 trainers have been engaged, and having aimed to help 500 disabled children, they've reached nearly 800 who've been able to enjoy being physically active. Lucy and the engine room, you have won a silver award. Congratulations. Now to India and Pakistan, where there are quite literally millions of Karana grocery stores. Metro had commissioned a new retail format design for the Karanas as part of a wider strategy to develop the franchisee model for these stores and in turn improve their cash and carry sales. But a key challenge lay in convincing franchisees that investing their own money into the physical improvements of the stores could deliver a strong financial return. M Worldwide's design does just that. The concept is a limited kit of parts, minimizing franchisees' costs. The modular fixture design attracts more walking customers and can hold 300 more product ranges than previously, allowing for more high selling items. In one test store, sales increased 35%, well ahead of the 20% target, and its wholesale purchases from Metro's cash and carry hugely exceeded the 40 to 50% objective. Congratulations on your bronze award, Metro and M Worldwide. Let's hear some more from M Worldwide about how they did that in our first chat this afternoon. Michael Heen, do join me. Mike, fantastic news, well done. Convincing franchisees to invest their own hard-earned money into physical improvements of stores required you to convince them of a strong return on investment. How did you do that? Well, I, I think that the, the key to us for this one was the fact that um, we had to start with their sort of their how much money they didn't have in their pocket, really, because these people, um, as I said on my sort of a submission, it's a razor thin profit margin we have here. And these people really have hard earned cash to be convinced to sort of let go. So we had to start with that in mind. We had to then look at how we source things locally to make sure there was no sort of uh, increase on import costs, things like that. Um, we had to deal with local contractors. Um, it was a real it was a real effort. And we had a, a good team 
um, based in Dubai and um, as it turned out in M Mumbai as well to to make that happen because it couldn't have happened otherwise we really did need to employ the strategic knowledge in the UK and then take that sort of um, reality check of what can be delivered in that sort of in that location. Fantastic. Mike, thank you very much for that. And thank you for joining us today. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much. Off to Australia now. Cadbury was celebrating 100 years of making chocolate in Australia, and Mondelez wanted to leverage this anniversary to strengthen the brand's status as a national icon. Through a series of limited edition packs for dairy milk, the 100 campaign by Bulletproof attracted a large base of new shoppers. An impressive 75% of growth was incremental to dairy milk blocks, and 36% was from people who had never bought chocolate box before. By tapping into Australian pride in their country, the eye-catching Pactivation helped grow value sales of the core range by almost 10% on the previous year, and Dairy Milk's brand power increased by four percentage points. Mondelez International Australia and Bulletproof have won a silver award today. Congratulations. Pet Head's new packaging by family and friends improved its net promoter score over 400% in the UK and US, well ahead of the 40% increase it was aiming for. The pet grooming brand's new pack design and visual identity enable it to stand out on shelf in a low differentiation category. While the iconic bone-shaped cap was kept to maintain provenance, the revitalization of the brand design has transformed Pet Head's image, enabling price increases of up to 50%. Pet Head secured 2,500 new speciality retail listings around the world, having aimed for 1,000, and year-on-year -year revenue increased 116% globally. It's a bronze award for Company of Animals and Family and Friends. Congratulations. Black Dog Scotch Whiskey had been distilled in Scotland and bottled exclusively in India since 1883, but being perceived as old fashioned, the brand's growth was in decline. Wanting to re-establish Black Dog as a category leader, Diageo India worked with Butterfly Cannon to transform the brand and packaging. The redesign has made Black Dog more culturally relevant, more authentically Scotch, and more recognizable on shelf. The brand now tops the category for brand equity, having been in third place previously. Top of mind awareness has increased to an all time high and the Scotch is now attracting younger affluent Indian consumers. Since the redesign, Black Dog has experienced 60% growth, 19% ahead of the category. And it's Juan Diageo and Butterfly Cannon our first gold award of the day. Congratulations. We'd like to speak to you, Chris Jocelyn from Butterfly Cannon and Hiren Diha from Diageo India. Do join us for a chat. Dog days are coming, won't be the last one to the bone. I'm howling out, I'm shouting out. You best believe I'll leave a legacy. My soul's undone My day has come Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. It's great to have you here today. Chris, if I can come to you first this afternoon, tell us about appealing to a new generation of younger affluent consumers in India. How did you go about doing that? Well, this was like a dream project for us because it just taps into like our belief that Butterfly can in, in the sort of powerful stories beautifully told. So Black Dog Scotch Whiskey had all of this authentic heritage, but it was sort of rooted um, in this sort of old world of status, which just wasn't sort of, um, which was jarring with modern India and wasn't appealing to this new generation of affluent consumers. And so we worked with the team at Diageo India first to sort of like um, sort of make its brand story more culturally relevant. Um, and we had this insight working with them about the fact that this new generation of Indians were sort of under this immense pressure to 
do more and do it ever faster. So that sort of led us to this solution of this idea of pause to savor. Um, the idea that the pause is as important as the pace, which tapped into the, the brand story of its founder, Walter Millard, and his love of taking time out from his love of whiskey making to enjoy his other love of fly fishing. Um, and that sort of idea of the sort of pause and the pace, this idea of contrasting element, elements, um, sort of informed sort of the whole of the design process, this sort of wonderful world of harmonious contrast, which you can see in the pack design. Fantastic. Chris, thank you for that. Um, Hiron, alcohol products can't be advertised in some areas in India. Does that put additional pressure on the packaging to really work for you? Absolutely. Uh, India is, is a unique market, right? Like some, some other regions as well, where alcohol as a category is a complete dark market. Uh, no digital you know, promotion, no advertising, nothing. So hence, Design plays a very strategic and a crucial role in establishing, you know, every code that you want to distill into a brand in terms of leaving a meaning as well as, you know, distinctivity within the brand. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, what happens is, you know, the long standing relationships that we have with all our design agencies, likes of part of like Canon, right, really help us to push that mm -hmm. even further. Um, and, and there's this always continuous belief from senior leadership, even within Diageo, that design plays a really, really crucial role in as a, as a design investment, as an important growth driver as well. So India, of course, plays a huge role because packaging is your medium of advertising for the brand. Fantastic. Congratulations to you both. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, and I can imagine you're going to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Perhaps you'll even crack open some yeah. black dog. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Well, well done, both of you. Thank you. Great. On to our next winner now. So in a sector facing a mental health crisis, the Retail Trust's rebrand by Baggy has helped the charity reach tens of thousands of retail workers and increase engagement with the support services it offers. Calls to the Trust's 24-hour helpline rose 10% following the launch of its new purpose, positioning and identity, and 48% more colleagues attended the charity's well-being and mental health courses. The brand has also revitalized the Trust's website and social media and provided opportunity to engage colleagues in new ways, which included a well-being festival. A return on social investment of £16 for every £1 spent was achieved following the redesign. And the Retail Trust and Baggy have won a bronze award today. Congratulations to you both. 95% of UK streets are stained by chewing gum, and yet many of us still don't realize it's a single use plastic. But a rebrand of biodegradable gum nude by Mother Design is helping to raise awareness among retailers and consumers. Across the packaging and broader brand world, the design playfully educates on the pitfalls of ordinary gum, while simultaneously communicating that nude is plant-based and plastic-free. Distribution has leapt from 100 retailers to over 2,500 since the redesign, and nude sales have grown 900% year on year. In 2022, the equivalent of nearly 4 million plastic straws were saved from entering the environment by consumers purchasing this brand rather than regular gum. That's almost 2,000% more than prior to the redesign. Well done on your silver award, Nude and Mother Design. Let's hear more about the positive environmental impact Nude is having.
The standout new look and premium positioning of Takamaka rum have caught the eye of bartenders and drinkers around the world. And having had just nine export markets before redesign, it now has 44. The new identity and packaging by Pearl Fisher capture the spirit of Takamaka's home islands, the Seychelles. The design has enabled a 100% price rise in the rum's domestic market with no change to the drink itself and home sales have nearly quadrupled. Export sales have grown 125%, while sales revenue is up 89% on pre-COVID levels. Congratulations, Pearl Fisher and Takamakaram on your bronze award this afternoon. On to our next winner now. Although solar energy is vital to the UK's renewable energy market, the Solar Trade Association's membership had halved since 2015. Brand Ethos worked with the organisation to redefine the brand. Renaming the association and creating a bold new visual identity and website which radiated confidence in the organisation's vision. Positioned as a modern trade association, the newly named Solar Energy UK achieved an unprecedented set of policy wins in 2021. Member numbers rose by more than a quarter, while 92% of members have been retained in comparison to a trade association benchmark of 84%. The association's team has increased from seven to 13 staff, and it's a bronze award for Solar Energy UK and Brand Ethos. Congratulations. Let's hear a little more about their success. I'd love to have a chat with you, Lisa Cromer from Brand Ethos and Cherry Parker from Solar Energy UK. Do come and join me. Uh, Cherry, I'm going to come to you first. Well, both, first of all, congratulations um, on your win this afternoon. Thank Cherry, you so a much. name change, it's a big deal for an organisation, a name change. How did you win that argument with your board and your members? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I got the job and my, my, my first conversation with the chief executive said, you know, we need to look at the brand. And he said, oh, you know, really, not, not now, <laughs> not straight away, you know. 
and it was you know we had a, we had a series of conversations like that over a period of a few weeks and then we took it to the board and um had the same kind of conversations but the board could see it was time and you know it is a real an unexpected pleasure to accept this award uh, on behalf of Solar Energy K. Our trade association has literally been transformed by this outstanding rebrand by Brand Ethos. And, you know, we came into this with quite a simple ambition, really, to reflect the modernity of, of the UK renewables industry. But the outcomes, as you've outlined, have, you know, clearly kind of massively exceeded that and will help us kind of keep on building that clean energy system for everyone's impact, for everyone's benefit. So we couldn't be more thankful to. Lisa and to Peter um, at Brand Ethos, who definitely gave us their best strategic and creative expertise. And I know we'll add this award to their other DBA awards. Great, thank you for that. And Lisa, what was it about the rebrands that enabled the association, do you think, to succeed in their, their policy wins? Is it kind of a newfound confidence, do you think? What is it about the rebrand? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's the confidence and also just the team getting right behind it and putting the work into it and um, having the enthusiasm, really, as much as anything. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for joining me this afternoon. Congratulations once again and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, in countries with high maternal mortality, many deaths could be avoided with simple antenatal care services. But in low resource areas, identifying high risk pregnancies can be challenging. To tackle this, the high risk pregnancy referral tool was developed jointly by Philips Experience Design, the International Committee of the Red Cross and Philips Foundation. The tool translates technical medical knowledge into pictorial illustrations and easy to digest information on portable, low cost, tear resistant cards. These equip health workers with reliable knowledge they can take on household visits. In a study of the tool's impact in two Kenyan counties, 485 women with pregnancy risks were identified and referred to healthcare centers and a 10% decrease in high risk home deliveries was seen. The referral tool has helped train 700 health workers and touched the lives of over 280,000 women and their families in Kenya. There are now plans to scale the tool to reach remote communities in China. Congratulations to Philips Foundation and Philips Experience Design. It's a gold award for you. We'd like to speak to you about the tool's life-saving impact. Please join me, Dr. Simona Rocci and from Philips Experience Design and Margo Kuimans from Philips Foundation. Simona and Margot, congratulations on your Gold Award this afternoon. Thanks, Emilio and Deborah, to deliver this fantastic news. It's an absolute pleasure. Simona, perhaps I could come to you first. You've experienced firsthand design intervention in a really important area of a society. This was key area for progress in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As an industry, how could we extend design's reach into other priority areas? The, the key to, to have an impact by design uh, is not only to be able to deliver uh, uh, information, uh, uh, reliable knowledge uh, to, to, uh, to make a difference, uh, in particular in the healthcare space, but also is to, pack, to package this information in a way that is very easy to digest, to understand, to be understandable and to resonate with the local communities. I think this combination of uh, delivering uh, reliable clinical insights uh, provided by our partners with the design skill to 
and create a, a visual language, a design language uh, that can really resonate with the local community is what we is what we um, created a, a powerful tool. Indeed. Margot, you have a very tangible example here of design's impact on a specific community. Why was it so important that it was the design team that tackled this issue with you? Well, it's uh, quite difficult to, uh, to find the best ways to reach these far and remote uh, communities, uh, uh, often illiterate uh, communities. So how do you do that? And of course, in, uh, in a deep and, and very um, uh, valued collaboration with ICRC, as you mentioned, we have um, um, asked the design team to look into the behaviors and the way uh, these, uh, these women normally uh, seek care or maybe do not seek care. And uh, to reach uh, numbers of people and to make an impact uh, during pregnancies, um, we normally look for digital tools uh, to, to reach a lot of people. But then you, you look into the way these people um, uh, think, uh, live, and, and how they, uh, they get their information. So you have to look into uh, efficiency versus uh, uh, effectiveness, right? Uh, and this, uh, well, exercise led to these cards and illustrations that are really simple, but really um, accessible for these women. So a good tool to, uh, to, to talk about uh, risks during pregnancy. Wonderful. Margot and Simona, and I know there are teams sitting behind you uh, involved in this. Congratulations to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you a lot. Now, having set M Worldwide the challenge of reinventing the DIY shopping experience, Icelandic retailer Husef Mithian saw customer satisfaction increase at its Akureyri store. M Worldwide looked at every facet of the customer journey to develop the new scalable retail interior design. Defined as the solution store, the concept inspires customers to take on new projects. In the first branch to adopt the design, sales per square meter increased while running crop costs fell. The fresh modern design has increased dwell time and attracted more domestic customers. Simpler wayfinding and a designated area for tradespeople has resulted in more professionals visiting the store too. The retail strategy has been so successful, it's been rolled out to other locations. And who says Mithian and M Worldwide have won a silver award. Congratulations. Now to the world's number one vodka. Even as the trend for flavored vodkas was on the rise, Smirnoff had been losing market share. To attract consumers, Diageo and Bulletproof created an updated platform for the brand's flavored vodkas, starting with Smirnoff's raspberry variant. The fresh new look has united the proposition across Smirnoff's flavors and enabled Raspberry Crush to become their most successful flavor launcher ever. Spanning visual identity, packaging and point of sale, the vibrant design triggered incremental growth with 74% of drinkers new to Smirnoff and 50% new to vodka. The vodka brand became the fastest growing spirit in absolute value and off the back of its success, the Raspberry Crush design platform has been extended to other flavors. Diageo and Bulletproof have won a silver award today. Congratulations. Now, interest in premium whiskey was flourishing and Gordon and McPhail wanted to take advantage of this growing demand. Engaging Contagious to address the complexity of its portfolio and products, 11 whiskey ranges were strategically streamlined into five. Each was designed to be distinct whilst identifiably part of the same family and a clear consumer pathway was created. This has helped the business maximize opportunities within the buoyant sector and Gordon and McPhail's case prices have increased over 100% since the redesign. The business has been able to grow gross profit through higher margins, not additional volume, 
with revenue increasing 71% from selling 18% less whiskey. Value sales of its luxury products leapt 61% within a year, while the global luxury market grew only 4% in that time. I'm delighted to say Gordon and MacPhail and Contagious have won a gold award. Please join me, Matt Chapman from Contagious and Ian Chapman from Gordon and MacPhail. Matt and Ian, congratulations. Good to have Thank you here this afternoon. Um, Ian, perhaps if I can come to you first, this was not a rebranding brief as such. Can you tell us more about the scope of the project and how it's enabled you to take advantage of growing demand in the market? Absolutely, and thank you very much. Uh, yes, this was a a mammoth project for us. It wasn't simply just a rebrand. It was uh, aligning uh, market intelligence, consumer insights, uh, our own strategic insight into the market and utilizing the skills of our partners at Contagious to really unravel this problem that we had uh, to really rationalize our, our portfolio, make our Gordon McPhail brand incredibly prominent across all of our ranges and unlock the potential of the story of Gordon and McPhail that had largely been untold for over 120 years. Reducing the range from 11 to five, I can imagine wasn't an easy conversation to have. Ian, how did you take that on board and did you have to convince others of doing that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our business is a fourth generation family owned business. So a very strong emotional connection to run through the company. So we had to take all of our stakeholders along uh, on this journey and really consult with them and really put forward a compelling and strategic case for doing this. So a lot of winning hearts and minds along the, the process as well, uh, working with our customers, working with our distributors uh, to really unlock the potential of what this brand could represent. Great. Matt, coming to you, if I may. Most businesses dream of being able to double their prices overnight. Why do you think design is able to do this for a business? Um, well, I think what we had to do with the, well, specifically for, for Gordon McPhail, which was a which was a dream project, by the way. Um, we re all we had to do was, I think, express these the family values that Gordon McPhail already had and connect, connect with consumers who they already had in, in great ways, but we just had to educate them, get them more aligned with the value of, uh, of, of Gordon McPhail as a brand and, and premiumize the portfolio, move them up with the portfolio and help them really stay with Gordon McPhail a little bit longer, spend more and be with them for life, really. Matt and Ian, thank you for joining me this afternoon and congratulations once again. Thank you. Right, Thanks. next to our next uh, award. Millions of people rely on denture fixatives to enjoy simple daily experiences like talking, eating and laughing. But with less socialising happening during the pandemic, fixative usage had dropped 20%. I'm really conscious I have to uh, get through this bit of the citation really cleanly. Uh, launching in 2022, Polygrip's distinct new packaging by Interbrand London for Halion was reignited and the fixative superiority in the category was re-established. In the US market alone, the brand achieved growth of nearly 10 times more than the market leader. The new design came out ahead of the old packaging on key metrics such as visibility, time to find and relevance, and it enabled a 10% price increase. Polygrip's global sales rose by almost 12%, while the market grew only 7%. Trial of the brand has been double Halion's target, and along with Interbrand London, they've won a silver award. Well done to you all. 
Now, Space Invaders' redesign of a Lloyds Bank branch has become the model for how sustainability can be incorporated into the banking group's future estate design. Rather than focusing on transactions, the spatial design of the branch at 399 Oxford Street embeds sustainability, showcasing Lloyds Banking Group's journey to a greener future. Within a year of opening, the remodeled branch significantly outperformed network averages against key business metrics. Understanding of the bank's sustainability goals has grown and awareness of resources in branch and on Lloyd's other channels has improved, helping in the bank's aim to reduce paper wherever possible. The whole concept is the most sustainable fit out in Lloyd's bank's history and it's all scalable to other branches. Congratulations, Lloyd's Banking Group and Space Invader, on your bronze award. Let's hear more about their approach and impact. About two years ago, uh, the branch suffered damage after a fire next door. And instead of us just coming back with the same branch that we had previously, it gave us an opportunity to redesign, reimagine what the branch uh, could look like to better serve the needs of customers, colleagues and society as a whole, not only now but for the future as well. So the ethos behind this particular branch um, is all around sustainability. So what we wanted to do with this particular branch was to see how much further could we actually do that within the physical design. These particular tables, um, this one is actually recycled bank uniforms um, and this one is recycled army uniforms. We've also got an eco-friendly toilet that is the most water efficient toilet. Everything that you see around here is sustainable. Purdy's new packaging by Brand Opus helped it counter the losses it sustained during COVID and the drinks brand grew over 12% year on year. Britvic's plan had been to grow the brand through a redesign, but as soon as the work began on the new packaging, COVID hit and the challenge got significantly harder with Purdy's losing distribution and suffering a 20% fall in sales. The new identity and packaging launched in May 2021 and has been crucial to Purdy's turnaround. The design widened Purdy's appeal and made it more easily identifiable on shelf. Distribution increased 20% in 12 weeks and value spend is now £2,100 per point of distribution. That's £600 up on pre-COVID averages. And along with Brand Opus, Purdy's have won a silver award. Well done to you all. The redesign of key pages of Avast's website had such an impact in the US test market, it's been rolled out to seven other countries. Elsie's brief was to elevate three pages of Avast site to drive direct revenue and also enable conversions from their free to download product to paid products. From top to bottom on the pages, every element is designed to support customers to find what they're looking for more quickly and with less friction. Pages uh, per session and average session duration both rose 30%, while bounce rate improved 27%, all indicating a better user experience. Direct purchase revenue grew 39% during testing and the design solution has been so successful, a further phase of work has been commissioned across Avast's digital estate. Congratulations Avast and Else on your bronze award. And on to quite literally a cracker. Peter's Yard became a premium player within the savory biscuit and cracker category following an evolutionary rebound by B&B &B Studio. 
The business's team has expanded from 12 to 17 staff. Spanning visual identity, packaging, brand world, and digital look and feel, the sensitive redesign has established the brand as the crisp bread worth paying more for. The design helped Peter's Yard win accounts with Selfridges, Little Waitrose, and Sainsbury's Local, and it became the fastest growing brand in the category. Volume sales increased 56% in one year against a target of 20%, despite launching into the difficult trading environment of 2020, and household reach doubled. The new branding was pivotal to Lotus Bakery's decision to buy the business in 2022, and Peter's Yard and b, &B Studio have won a silver award today. Congratulations. Let's talk to you about the design approach. Please join me, Nellie Veltman from b, &B Studio. I don't know about crackers in bed, Nelly, but mm -hmm. this is a subtle and sensitive evolutionary rebrand. Can you tell us a little more about how that's enabled Peter's Yard to stand out on shelf? Thank you. And it's such a pleasure to pick up this award on behalf of Peter's Yard and, and all of the team at B&B. We're absolutely, absolutely thrilled. Um, yes, it was, a, it was a, a really lovely example of a brand evolution um, and a sensitive evolution. I think what was so key to this uh, rebrand was actually the creative strategy. And it's a lovely uh, example of the power of design strategy, design creative strategy to empower the packaging design, but also the kind of wiser brand comms and enable Peter's Yard to really tell some of its incredible uh, kind of stories which connect with the values of the product and this really um, crafted cracker, um, sourdough cracker, and also connect with kind of cultural shifts um, and cultural trends around deceleration. So this idea of time well spent, which uh, kind of really empowered the design refresh um, and the wider comms, really allowed the brand to tell stories, to connect emotionally, and to kind of connect with these ideas of mindfulness and deceleration that the that the product ex itself stands for. So I think although the design itself was a very uh, kind of considered and sensitive and crafted evolution, actually the impact um, for the brand was was so great because of that uh, kind of renewed positioning around time well spent and the storytelling that that allowed. And Nelly, how important is it for businesses to engage design when they're trying to break through into new listings or new accounts, win new accounts? I mean, the power of design as seen through all of these case studies is just so great. And I think for, for Peter's Yard, the brand had been out um, in the market for about 10 years. It was doing pretty well in grocery. It was doing extremely well as a kind of artisanal brand um, within the independence as well. But they really, really sort of realized, I think, that to take ownership of this uh, more accessible premium space within grocery, you know, the design just needed to work that bit harder and the brand needed to work that bit harder. And I think what, what was so wonderful about this um, evolution is you know, it didn't alienate those independents where it had this, the, you know, its place as an artisanal brand, but equally it was enabled to kind of really encourage people um, that this is a brand worth paying more for within grocery and sort of take advantage of that accessible premium space within the category. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you for that insight. And congratulations again this afternoon. Thank you. Now, after COVID shut down the hospitality sector in 2020, Diageo set out to enable pub drinkers to emulate the great quality of a Guinness draft pint at home. Partnering with product design specialists Dolman Design and Innovation, a groundbreaking dispense system was created, which has been a game changer. The innovative pouring device mounts to the top of the recyclable Guinness Nitro Surge can, enabling consumers to consistently achieve beautiful pints at home. It's changed consumer perceptions around the at-home experience. 
and impressively with its higher price point and lower production costs than the existing canned offering, Guinness Nitro Surge has achieved an 8.5% uplift in beer sale profitability. Net sales exceeded the five-year sales target in just nine months. And before we find out what they've won, let's hear about how they achieved this. And I'm delighted to say that Diageo and Dolman Design Innovation have won a gold award. Well done to you all. Please do join me for a chat. Ian McDevitt from Dolman and Catherine Wilson from Diageo. To ask is a smooth You're all crammed into one picture there. Excellent. Um, Ian, which one of you is Ian? Excellent, Ian. Deborah. Nice to see you. Congratulations. I'm going to come to you first, if I may. How did you put sustainability at the heart of the product design? So I, I, I think uh, sustainability is, is, is always a key part uh, of the product design uh, cycle these days. Um, and, and certainly looking at you know how we could minimize the uh, environmental impact was uh, one of the top items on on our priority list and certainly with a fully recyclable can um it's gone some small way to uh, improving uh, the sustainability impact fantastic catherine uh, if i can come to you guinness have a long history of working with creatives were you surprised at just how successful this innovation was in the market absolutely and, and i think you, you asked in the question about working with creatives. And I think this, this project is such an incredible story of collaboration and a partnership. Um, on the project team, we had everybody from designers to master brewers to innovation teams to our incredible partners at Dolman Design. And I think we could have only achieved this breakthrough as a team with a partner who not only in, uh, understood our brand incredibly well, but also understood the liquid. And we've been working together for 18 years, and that's really what's at the heart of this. And we are so delighted with the win. Catherine, thank you for that. A really important message there about the nature of the relationships uh, that we have between clients and, and agencies. Thank you for that. Congratulations once again. Thank you for joining thank you. me. Thank you. Great, now on to our next award. Skin Sapiens smashed its three-year revenue target within two and a half years with a purposefully simple brand and packaging design by Lewis Moberly. The sustainable skin care startup, uh, that's a tongue twister that I didn't quite get right, had a very limited launch budget and the design enabled it to stand out in an ultra competitive market. The range's stylish, minimalist look is rooted in sustainability of materials and embodies the pure nature of the products. Press interest has come from as far afield as Vogue Japan and prestigious distribution with retailers including Selfridges and Holland and & Barrett has been secured. 
In a market growing at 7% a year, Skin Sapiens has achieved up to triple figure revenue growth year after year since its 2020 launch. And along with Lewis Moberly, has won a bronze award today. Congratulations. From sustainable skincare to sustainable town centers now. Sigtun through Neflela and M Worldwide's placemaking design strategy helped change perceptions of Selfos, and the town now has the fastest growing community in Iceland. Selfos's downtown area was in decline and needed a viable town center. M Worldwide's design approach brought together the suggestions of experts and the community. Their placemaking strategy has ensured the needs of residents, tourists, and businesses have all been met, and there is the right mix of commercial tenants and sectors to support footfall throughout the year. In Selfos, 13 new buildings have been cost-effectively built from the ground up with environmental certification. All the new apartments sold without advertising and the shops, restaurants and offices have all performed strongly in their first year. The whole community is engaged and prospering. 40 new buildings are in the pipeline and Sigtu and Thrumanapella and M Worldwide have won a bronze award today. Congratulations. Let's take a look at this fascinating project. Fantastic project. Icoff is a much loved 188 year old beer brand, but it had got stuck in the past. Heineken commissioned Pell Fisher to undertake a complete brand portfolio redesign of the Swiss beer, aiming to reserve, reverse years of volume and market share decline. Following the launch of the new pack design, Icoff grew market share an impressive 1.2% in the highly competitive category. Within six months, the brand significantly outperformed the Swiss beer market, which declined 3%. Making a stunning comeback, Eikhoff's volume decline was reversed from minus 64% to plus 4.7%. And it performed 0.6% stronger than the rest of Heineken's Swiss beer portfolio. I'm delighted to announce that Heineken and Pearl Fischer have scooped a gold for Hykoff. Congratulations. Come and have a chat with me, Jack Hart from Pearl Fisher. I like beer. It gets me grinning from ear to ear. Not just every now and then. I'm talking 365 days a year. I can do it around the clock. Jack, congratulations. Great, thanks so much, Deborah. I'm also joined by Gabby, who uh, worked on the project with me. Absolutely over the moon to have uh, received gold today. Thanks very much. 
Absolute pleasure. Jack, if I can come to you first, how did you make sure that redesigning such an iconic and long-standing leader in the Swiss beer market was going to appeal to new and old customers alike? There's a real danger, isn't there, that you lose the old customers? Yeah, I think so. I think we're obviously so blessed uh, that ICOF has a huge amount of, of history and heritage, but with that means that over the years it's accrued an incredible story and, and some fascinating and intriguing equities. Uh, the Skrill, for example, actually people in Lucerne have that tattooed on their skin. People are so uh, wedded to the brand and, and some of that equity. So I think diving back into that history and heritage and finding the, the, the tools and the assets that really resonate uh, with the existing consumers and finding ways through of course, you know, design expression to, to make them relevant and modern to engage with a new audience was really the key to that brief. So the idea that really sat behind this was this idea of sort of new traditions and really bringing that to the fore with existing equity in a, in a much more modern way. Fantastic. And perhaps I can address uh, the other question to you. What specific elements of the design solution do you think enabled ICOF to stand out in such a competitive market? Gabby, do you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah, sorry, Gabby, so, I meant that uh, directly yeah. to you. <laughs> when we um, created what we called the Guild, which is the iconic kind of circular device, yeah. um, I think it was key to, to maintaining um, standout on the shelf. Previously, ICOF was very fragmented in their portfolio. So by putting the Guild front and center with the um, iconic assets and then using color to do variation, I think that was really key in breaking through the, the kind of shelf and having a big impact. Fantastic. Congratulations once again. Thank you both for joining me this afternoon. Great. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, well, I expect you to be drinking beer. <laughs> Great. Nice uh, to have you here. Thank you. Right. That brings us to the end of our Bronze, Silver and Gold Awards. And in just a minute, we'll be revealing who has won the coveted Grand Prix. The past few years have been quite unlike anything any of us have, could have predicted, but the winners and all of you listening, along with all of your peers and colleagues across the whole of our inspiring industry, have continued to use design as a force for good in our world. We've heard some impressive results today, but also we've heard how design teams keep working, keep learning, keep pushing for real transformation and continue making a difference to this world, whatever the challenge is. So congratulations to you all. The results speak for themselves and are testament to the strength of your collaborations and the power of your dedication. And once again, thank you to our judges who really do put hours into the process, as well as care and focus when appraising the entries. The rigour involved is what makes the DBA Design Effectiveness Awards so rewarding to win. As our society and businesses continue to face new challenges, never has it been more important for the voice of design as problem solver, as source of original thinking and novel solutions to be loud. We must keep design in a position to explore and solve, to work towards new priorities for people, planet and profit for all. And so to the Grand Prix Award, each year, our panel of judges choose to elevate one winner from amongst the gold awards to receive the prestigious and coveted DBA Design Effectiveness Grand Prix. This award is presented to the winner the judges feel presents the most significant and impressive evidence of design making impact. As with every year, there was fierce competition amongst our gold winners and energetic debate and discussion amongst our judges. This year's winner used design to impact lives. By improving healthcare services to pregnant mothers and their families in socioeconomically disadvantaged communities and making progress against the third of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, this year's winner continues to touch the lives of thousands of women and healthcare workers in low resource settings across the globe. I am proud to announce that the winner of the 2023 DBA Design Effectiveness Grand Prix is Philips Experience Design and the High Risk Pregnancy Referral Tool. Congratulations. Please join me, Dr. Simona Rocci and Margot Kumans.
Margot and Simona, great to have you back again. Congratulations wow. on the Grand Prix. And I know you've made a short film about this work, so let's watch that now and then I'll come back to you for questions. Globally, up to 20% of pregnancies are high risk. 94% of all maternal deaths occur in low resource settings. To identify these high risk pregnancies early, we developed the High Risk Pregnancy Referral Tool, which translates critical knowledge into illustrations. This tool is easy to use. It empowers healthcare workers to identify high risk pregnancies for timely referral and encourages pregnant women to adopt healthy practices. Let's dive into the tool. It is a combination of clinical and cultural insights that makes our tool so effective. These ensure reliability and relevance for all our users. The flexibility of our tool to accommodate different languages and environments make it quick for scaling to generate broader impact. Looking just at the numbers, you could see a very difference, a very big difference in the ANC attendance. So attendance is early on in pregnancy and more women actually completing all the eight contacts that are supposed to be. Our tool already improved the lives of 280,000 women in seven countries. We're looking forward to expanding our impact. Fantastic projects. Thank you for um, taking into that, uh, us into that a little bit more. Um, and again, I'd like to urge everyone to read the case studies um, after today's uh, session. They really are inspiring. Margot, if I can come to you again, the mission of the Phillips Foundation has the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals at its core. And uh, your website talks about providing access to quality healthcare for underserved communities through meaningful innovation. Why did you opt to address this critical goal with design? Well, uh, we are affiliated, of course, uh, with Philips, uh, which is a healthcare technology leader. Uh, so that we have focused on healthcare is not a surprise. Um, and we uh, we are so lucky as to uh, to have Philips Design uh, in the house. So it is a, log a logical combination, I think. Uh, however, the um, the playing field, the, the field where the foundation tries to make an impact, is typically in these underserved and very remote uh, areas. So um, the challenge is big uh, and um, well, Simona and her team are really uh, keen on working on these kinds of challenges. So uh, it was a logical uh, combination. Fantastic. And Simona, I mean, your work at Philips Experience Design spans a wide range of brands and, and businesses. How was this project with the International Committee of the Red Cross different? Yeah, um, well, it was different because uh, was an effort that really require the development of the trust, you know, because both we were driven by impact, but you know, when you bring together a company, even if we have the Philly Foundation, you know, between us as a, as a mediator and the humanitarian sector, sometimes we have different paths to execute the project. We speak different language. And so it was quite complex, not so much to develop the tools, but to create the ecosystem to act with impact together. And uh, we found at the end the right formula because uh, we, we started just to listen to them rather than to propose already technology as a way forward. We try to understand their needs. And uh, one of the key needs was that very obvious uh, uh, fact that 94% of maternal mortality happen for pregnancy in, in related also to preventable cause in those settings. So both uh, Philly, Philly Foundation uh, is very keen to improve maternal health, is one of our key targets, like is also their target. And uh, we combine forces with our capability and with their expertise, and uh, we find the right formula to, to work together and to scale. Fantastic. 
Um, I have to say, I can't wait to see what comes out of that combination of, um, of uh, the foundation and the, and the, the design teams in the future. Um, it's had such a profound impact um, in the um, situation that you're in now. We look forward to what uh, you'll be doing in the future. Uh, Simona and Margot, congratulations once again, and thank you for joining thank me. Thank you so much, uh, Deborah. Thanks so much for this wonderful news. It is very encouraging, particular now that we are taking the tool even outside Africa, and we started to adapt and to scale uh, with uh, the, the relevant nuances also to, to China. Wonderful. Simona, thank you very much. Thanks so much for this sort of fantastic award. Thank you. Right, well, that brings us to the end of today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us and thank you to our judges. I'm indebted to you all. You invest your time and energy into these awards and it shows. It's our job now to use these case studies to champion the role of design in business and society. A last word to all of our winners, bronze, silver, gold, and Grand Prix. You've shown us the power of what design can achieve the positive change it can create. My congratulations to you all. Raise your glasses, enjoy your celebrations. And until next time, thank you very much.